So whenever we close a channel, that channel closure is, uh, there's, a, there's a broadcast effect where the closure of the channel is sent to all the, all the fibers that are listening to that, to that particular channel. So any, any fiber that is in receive will be notified about the closure. Now, if we're just receiving, if we just call channel.receive, that's gonna actually cause a, uh, an exception to be raised. So we need to be uh, to make sure we are actually handling that exception, which is something we can do inside um, inside the status checker. The other thing we want to do thing we want to do with the status checker is rather than taking a result stream as an output, we actually want to return one. So I'm just gonna take this uh, out of the of the initialization and just say that we're actually returning the result stream. So this is gonna be something like result stream equals something something and you can see how something is not looking quite right at the moment so we we used to just run a bunch of status checkers one after the other um but but now we want to make sure that they all uh, publish on a single channel but we also want to make sure that they own the channel so we need to refactor our code a bit so rather than iterating over uh, the number of uh, uh, based on the number of workers what we'll do is we'll just define status checker in a bit of a more a smarter way where we actually say workers is config dot workers which I think is what we initialized it, initialized it to be and then what we want to make sure is that we are returning the uh, result stream uh, which comes from a status checker, checker run so do you see what's going on here so we need to go to status checker and make sure that whenever people call run on it rather than um, taking in the output channel, it's actually going to return the, the, that, that particular channel. And I actually want to go back and get the signature right. So sorry about that. There we go. I'm just gonna copy this signature because it's a bit complex. Nice. And then going to status checker, I'll just make sure that we're doing channel dot new, and then we're doing tap again. So same pattern as we saw before. And this is again the out stream, but actually we know that this time it's the URL status stream, so we can be a bit more expressive, more more um, intentional in the way we define uh, the output stream. So that's going to be URL status stream. And then once we once we are done with the um, with logic, we just uh, wrap up and return the channel itself. So this is the channel we're going to return, but you know that we also defined a number of workers and this number of workers is an integer, let's say it's an int32, and we want to do something with this uh, number of workers, right? And in particular, what we want to do is we want to generate one fiber for each worker. So we're going to say something like workers.times, I'm going to use a worker identifier here, and for each one of them, we're going to spawn a fiber something like this okay so for each worker spawn do and then loop over the URL stream which is the input stream okay and while we're at it I'm actually also gonna define a name for for the for the URL stream which is always a good habit so these are gonna be our workers so I'm just gonna say worker and then underscore and then interpolate so that we can uh, figure out which fiber is doing what and then we're going to be looping right so this should just work all right so compilation should be okay but we're still having the problem where if we control c on the application uh, we're going to get a closed uh, channel exception let's let's have a look just to make sure we are not mistaken and what we'll need to do is inside the inside the fiber itself while while we're looping wherever whenever we call your stream dot receive this might actually throw an exception which is going to be a channel closed exception right so what I'll do is inside the definition of the of the channel of the of the fiber I'm going to handle explicitly that particular exception, which is channel closed exception. Whenever that happens, I'm going to print something just by means of requiring dot dot logging and including our logger uh, extend logger logging actually, 
And now I should be able to say log logger dot info uh, input in stream was closed. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, I'm going to compile again. Hopefully this will get us somewhere. Uh, in particular, what I'm expecting is I'm expecting to see this particular uh, line. I'm going to swap to another view so you can look at the uh, terminal. Right. I'm going to I'm going to control C now. Let me also have a look at the terminal. You can see we are sending URLs on the terminal. Now control C and that's great. So we go shutting down and then uh, we can see how the status checker worker one and worker zero are actually saying that the input stream was closed, which is great. It means we're handling everything fine. And then if we go back to our presentation, there we go. And we have a look at what the, what the, what the chart looks like. We're terminating. So whenever we, whenever status checker receives the signal that um, the upstream URL, the, the upstream URL stream has been has been closed. We'd like to also propagate the closure to the to the uh, output stream, which is the uh, URL stream, uh, whatever that's called, URL status stream, right? Now we have a slight issue here because what we like to do is whenever you rescue, then I want to ensure that we URL status stream dot close, right? Fair enough, right? Now the problem with this is that if we do this, if we have a number of workers, say we have four workers, each one of the workers will receive a signal when the channel closes, and each one of the workers is going to try and shut down the uh, the output stream, which is not really what we want. There's going to be some some errors, and um, this is going to get messy very very quickly. So what we'll do instead is we're going to define another another fiber. We're going to call it a supervisor fiber name supervisor and the aim of the supervisor channel uh, fiber is to monitor a channel called countdown and uh, and just make sure that it receives one one message for each worker workers dot receive sorry workers dot times countdown receive we also need to make sure we define what countdown is. So let's do it outside here because there's no dependency. So we're just going to say countdown is a new channel that receives nil values and it's going to be a new one. And actually, I'm going to make it as big as the workers are so that workers don't block when they're uh, sending the message. Um, this is just in a, like a, a very small optimization. It's not really um, necessary. And so to recap, we have a supervisor fiber that just listens to this countdown uh, channel. And whenever it receives uh, all like one for each worker will guess what? It will close the output stream just like this. OK, now we only need to make sure that we are actually sending messages to the countdown. When are we going to do that? We're just going to do that here. So to recap, the idea is we rely on a supervisor uh, listening to count on channel. And whenever a fiber, one of the workers receives a closed error exception, it logs it. And then inside the insure block, we just make sure we send a nil value to the countdown. The supervisor is going to listen and wait for as many workers as we have um, defined to actually call the um, uh, before it actually moves on and closes the output the output stream as easy as that now if we haven't made any uh, syntax uh, syntax mistake we're gonna see some more closed um, channel exception being uh, like popping up downstream let's see what happens 